The Wheel of Time is one of the most re-readable book series ever put to page. I can honestly only think of a few other series that have people reading more than 15 and 20 times. And on top of that, there are 15 long books to reread. There has to be a reason for this. Now, while all the reasons to reread The Wheel of Time are probably a video of their own, one of the largest reasons is all of the foreshadowing both subtle and straightforward that Robert Jordan puts into the books. In today's video, we're gonna pick up the series I started more than a year ago and examine one of the ways Robert Jordan does foreshadowing through Min Farshaw's visions. Join me for part two of the series, looking at Min's visions and what they mean. <laughs> So I started this series like a year ago and it got away from me, but I think it's time to dive back on in. Before we do that though, let me hit the spoiler warning. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red with major spoilers running all the way through the end of the series. If you have not read all of the books, you are going to be spoiled if you go further with the video. You have been warned. Now, all right, since it's been a while, let me catch you up to speed. The first of these videos I made covered men's viewings through Eye of the World and broke down what they meant and how they came true or if they came true. Today in part two, we are going to cover her viewings from the Great Hunt and the Dragon Reborn. However, before diving into the viewings themselves, I think it's gonna be helpful to recap a bit about what she actually does when she has a viewing and define her powers, if you will. Essentially, Min has the power to see the pattern. According to Robert Jordan, this is not an ability that is unique to her but more a talent or ability that is returning to the world. So there are others with her ability. She's just the only one that we know of from the books. That being said, Tuan speaks as though what Min does is very rare, but not unheard of. And so maybe there are others like her in Sean Chan. It appears that it's pretty highly respected in Sean Chan. So maybe people are more forthcoming about actually having that ability there. Now there are a couple other rules that we have from Robert Jordan as well that are worth mentioning. Number one, her viewings always come true but she often doesn't know what they mean. Number two, her viewings are always of the future, not the past. So when she has a viewing, it's something that will happen, not something that has happened. Number three, her viewings are completely separate from foretelling or dreaming, and they have nothing to do with the one power at all. And number four, kind of an extension of that, what she does is completely unrelated to what the Finns do in reading or telling people's futures. So with all of that out of the way, Let's take a look at the first of Min's viewings from The Great Hunt. Now, the first one comes in chapter 24 and is a viewing of Elaine. She will have to share her husband with two other women and she will be a queen. A severed hand, not hers. Now, this wasn't directly from Min's mouth, but actually Elaine telling Egwene of the viewing that Min gave her already. Now, the part about sharing her husband with two others is obviously a reference to her, Rand, Avienda, and Min. When Elaine says that she would never accept that, Min just kind of smiles and says that it's what, what she wouldn't want that either. But it's kind of funny because in hindsight, we know that Min knows she's one of the three women. The second part of that is obvious that she's going to become the Queen of Andor. This is pretty straightforward, but given that all of her viewings come true, Elaine should really have never had any doubt that she would become the Queen of Andor because she obviously does and Min has a viewing about it. The third part of this one is the severed hand. Now this could mean one of two things. First, and the most obvious to me, it's referring to Rand's hand being burned off by Simarog. The other interpretation here is that it could be Galad when his arm is cut off in a battle with the Mondred. I would lean into this being Rand just because of the context, but who knows. The next viewing comes from the same chapter. Min tells Egwene that she sees a white flame and other things. Now, while other things, we don't know what that is, the white flame is pretty easy to interpret. The white flame represents the Amarlin seat, something that Egwene will become in a few books. At this point though, None of the three girls knows what that means. What I think is pretty damn cool about this is Robert Jordan knew where this was going, foreshadowed it this early. We had no idea what it meant. The characters didn't know what it meant, but he knew where he was going. That's the kind of thing that he bakes into these books that I love. We then skip ahead to chapter 38, where Min has a viewing of Galad. She says he will hurt someone to serve a greater good and not even notice. Now, this one's a little tougher. It takes a little bit of digging to figure out but I think it refers to the time in Fires of Heaven that Galad, while attempting to keep his word to protect Elaine and Nynaeve, starts a riot in a city and kills a bunch of people in the name of protecting them. This is something that is utterly a part of Galad's characterization, but to me it's also a part of his arc 
as at the end of the books, he seems to have moved away from seeing things as only black and white. I actually love his arc. I love that this is a part of that. Because later on, he does seem to sort of see the gray area and the moral gray area in things. In chapter 42, we see Min again talking with Egwene while she's in captivity with the Shan Chan. Egwene is starting to feel broken by the Idom, and Min tells her this viewing to bolster her spirits and keep fighting. I've read you, Egwene. I see things I am sure link you to Rand and Perrin and Matt and yes, even Galad. Now, there isn't much to find here outside of the obvious that Egwene would be connected to the other main characters of the story, and this obviously goes on to be true as Egwene would become the Amarillan seat and play a major role in the last battle and everything leading up to it. In the next chapter, as Min, Elaine, and Nynaeve plot to rescue Egwene, Min has a viewing of Nynaeve and Elaine. Now, first with Nynaeve, she sees a man's ring of heavy gold floating above Nynaeve's head. This one is obvious. It's Lan's ring, which he gives her to show his love to her. For Elaine, it's a bit harder to understand. And above Elaine's, a red hot iron and an ax. Now, Min goes on to think that this means trouble, but in the distant future. I really can't think of anything that this directly correlates to from the story, but Min seems to believe that it's troubling. Maybe it represents the battles and the crucible of her ascension to the throne of Andor, but that is just a guess. I thought at first it might mean Perrin with the axe, but by the time Perrin meets Elaine, he's thrown away the axe and is using a hammer now. So I don't think that's him. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments of the video. Before we move on to the Dragon Reborn though, let me quickly thank the video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that you can learn essentially anything you want on their platform for an absurdly low monthly cost. When I started making YouTube videos, I used Skillshare to learn quite a few new things. They have courses on video editing, graphics, audio recording, how to market yourself, how to market yourself to get a new job, how to cook like a chef, and tons and tons of other things. As I said, it's an extremely low price too. Now, just because you're one of my viewers, you can click the link in the description of this video and check out the Skillshare service for a whole month, totally for free. There's no commitment and you can check out everything there and figure out if it's something that you wanna keep. Like I said, it's absurdly cheap. It's got a lot of value and I think you'll end up keeping it. But the great part is just for checking it out for free and signing up for that trial, you're gonna greatly help out the channel as well. So thank you to everybody who's done that enjoy Skillshare, and let's get back to the video. So as we jump into the Dragon Reborn, we start in the winter camp that Rand kind of set up in the mountains after the events of the Great Hunt. Moraine and Lan are with him, as well as Min and Perrin and the Shinarans. A Tinker Woman comes into the camp, and Min has a viewing of her and tells Perrin about it. The Tinker Woman is going to die. After being questioned by Perrin about why she's gonna die, she says, I saw her own face floating over her shoulder, covered in blood, eyes staring. It's never any clearer than that. So as Min said, this one is fairly clear. At first, they aren't sure when the Tinker will die, but not long after, she is killed by a Trolloc attack on the camp. Now, this is one of the instances where Min is extremely certain of one of her visions. There are times she knows exactly what they mean and the times that she just guesses sometimes. Now, the final vision from the book happens as Perrin, Moraine, Lan, and Loyal are about to set off after Rand after he runs away. Min tells Perrin that right as he agreed to go after Rand, she saw some things that he needed to be aware of. An Aielman in a cage, a Tuatha on with a sword, a falcon and a hawk perching on your shoulders. Both female, I think. Now these are actually some significant visions here. The Aielman in a cage happens later in the book when the group comes upon Gaul in a cage, Perrin rescues him and together they fight off a bunch of white cloaks. This becomes significant as Gaul will become a loyal companion to Perrin for really the rest of the books. He ends up helping protect Rand and the world of dreams as he fights the Dark One in a memory of light. So this little interaction actually sparks a series of other events that become pretty important. The Tuatha on with a sword is a reference to Aram. Now while this one is obvious, it's actually pretty cool because this doesn't have anything to do with this particular book and it doesn't even happen until the latter third of A Shadow Rising. It's pretty cool that Robert Jordan plants the seeds this early, like in the book before, and then it's almost an entire book from here that we find out that Aram actually picks up a sword. I just think that's kind of cool. The Falcon and Hawk are references to Fael and Barrelane, respectively. Fael means Falcon, so that one's pretty obvious. The Hawk is a direct reference to the flag of Mayen, which Barrelane represents as the first of Mayen. So obviously the viewing is of the two of them fighting over Perrin. Again, pretty cool because Barrelane doesn't show up in this book. So it's actually pretty awesome that we're foreshadowing that. So that wraps up the Dragon Reborn. Again, 
What I love about the prophecies in the Wheel of Time is how many of them take a long time to come true. Like there's planning that went into this and that's kind of where the writing becomes exceptional to me. And it's one of the things that I think makes these books so rereadable. You catch stuff like this every time you read. Of course, we'll be back soon with more viewings from Min as we'll keep going through the books on her. But what do you guys think of these viewings? Is there anything that I missed or any interpretations that might be different than what I said? Let me know in the comments of the video. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release more Wheel of Time content. I have a ton of it on the way. Remember, I have a new release schedule with lore videos coming out on Sunday evenings a live recording that you can watch and be a part of on Monday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern time. I'm always going to have a guest. We'll do some fun stuff there. Then we're going to have two Wheel of Time read-through videos per week during on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then finally, a TV show and community news video that will come out every single Friday with a cool contest. This week, I am giving out a set of Apple AirPod Pro. You can actually learn how to win that. Go back and watch the previous video to learn how to enter that contest. Check out all the rest of the content. Again, also check out the Patreon if you want to support the channel and the grapelight.com community website that I help run. Thank you all for watching and until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on the robe of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free crying. Tinker, oh dear, Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?